So we're going to consider sampling and sampling distributions. So you must understand that we've been dealing with populations and samples. A population is simply um, a set of all possible outcomes or measurements of interest. And the subset of a population is called a sample. So there are many populations that we can have under consideration. But particular interest is the term sampling. What is to sample? What is sampling? Anyone in your own definition? What is a sample? I would say it's to get a smaller piece of the pie, smaller piece of the whole. Okay. A sample is a sample uh -huh. is a, just a small element of a population, a small element of a population that is picked for maybe for experimental purposes and whose results will be able to reflect that of the entire population. Okay. So then why would we rather go for a sample than a whole population? What is the essence of sampling? Because the population will be too large, so you deal with the small elements. All right. A population may be too large, so we would rather deal with a small population. That's one of the reasons. What is the other reason why we would rather go for a sample and not the entire population? I'm loving your answers. Already what I can um, remember, you just told me that a population is a bigger um, sample space. Then a subset of this population is called a sample. So a sample can be a representation of this entire population. So the process of collecting sampling units in the entire population is called what? A census. So then the process of selecting smaller units of this population is, is called sampling. So sampling uh, is important for many reasons. Number one, when we pick a sample, it may be a representative of the whole population. So sampling is what um, may be sufficient to represent or maybe representative. Examples, you're working for uh, a brewery. We have testers who need to know whether the cop or the alcohol levels um, within range. It's an aspect of time. Again, we go for sampling because of time aspect. It will redeem us of time. Sampling is also important sometimes because of finance. You'll be doing your research and um, it may not be viable financially for you to do the whole population. Sometimes sampling is necessary because you may never be able to approximate number of babies that are born in the whole universe. The universe size is simply too big and sampling is the only option, the only approximate. All right, why do we sample? Accuracy levels. Sometimes, which one is got a higher accuracy level? A larger sample or a smaller sample? Smaller sample. Sometimes we have uh, the destructive nature of sampling. Okay. Have a cure for HIV. 
and you'd rather work with a sample because um, you don't know the confidence levels. So we're going to look at what are called significance levels and confidence levels. All right. So under this topic, we're going to look at um, formulas in wine. So we're going to look at sample formulas and proportion formulas. When I say sample, we're looking at what? Standard deviation. Proportions, we're looking at what? P and Q. So when you'll be doing your research, you'll be required to justify why you're using um, a particular sample size. So sample size is equal to Z squared, the variance over the error squared. That is if you're dealing with a sample. Or Z squared, P times Q over the level of precision error. The error comes in terms of within. If you're looking for confidence interval, we're looking for the mean um, interval, the range. Okay. Z standard deviation over square root of N. Or oh, confidence interval, we are looking at it in terms of a proportion simply P plus minus Z PQ over capital N. Now, A stands for the error term. A stands for the standard deviation. We square it is a variance. So the Z, <coughs> the Z score table, I, I've been teaching you how to read the Z score table. So we have what we call our confidence level. We have 99%, we have 98%, the common ones that I will give you, 95% and 90. The difference from 100 is called the level of significance. So here we have 1%, and here we have what? Two, and here, 5%, then here we have what? 10%. So when you divide the level of significance by 100, it is now called alpha. We have 0 0.01. Here it will be 0 0.1. 0 0.2. Here it's 0 0.05. And here it's 0 0.10. So this is a song that I want you to learn. 99, 98, 95, 90. We have what? 2%, 1%, 5%, 10%. So far, are there any questions from what I've tabulated? Mr. Colin, can you kindly go back to the previous page that you showed before this one? Okay. I go to page that I've just showed. Any other questions before I go to the page? Okay. Uh, my question is on this Z score. Is this given or do you have to develop it? You have to memorize these figures here. So on the Z score, we're going to look at a two-tailed test. For 99, it is 2.58. For 98, it is 2.33. For 95, it is 1.96. For 90, it is 1.645 or 1.65. So I want us to first learn this song before I go any further. So pretend to be like kids, all right? Let's go together. We have four confidence so, levels. So disturbing you. I can see this the screen. Okay, can you see the screen? No. No. I'm seeing only Chayanik. I think his video is on. Please uh switch off all your videos.
Can you now see the video? Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. All right. Let's go to our song. We have four confidence levels. We have 99. Followed by what? 98. Then? 95. 95. Then? 90. 90. These are called confidence levels. The difference from 100 is in plants level. So we have what? 1. 1%. Uh -huh. 2%. Uh -huh. 5%. Uh -huh. And 10%. And 10%. So we know that these two are adding up to 100. So when we divide mm -hmm. this by 100, we call it alpha. So this is your point zero one then? Yeah. Zero point zero two. Mm -hmm. Zero point zero five. Mm -hmm. And that's supposed to be zero point one. All right. Then we have a corresponding Z values under two tailed for ninety nine percent, which is the same as one percent or zero point zero one. What is the Z? Let's go again. 2.5. Is, is that for 99%? 2.58. How about the Z for 98? 2.33. 1.33 for 95? 1.96. 1.96. And for 90? 1.65. 1.65. 645. Either, either one is qualified. All right. Now, how did we get those figures at the far end? Is there a way in which we could um, uh, calculate those figures from the table? Yes, there is a way. So what's the procedure? So I'll take you through the procedure of calculating that, but where possible, memorize them because the procedure is a little bit long. It is only important um to um to know at least that this table will be given in case you're given a percentage outside those um those ones that are mentioned that's when i could recommend that you use the tables all right so Let's go to the tables. So the table that we will use in particular will be there. The Z table, the standard normal Z table. Here is the standard normal Z table, the one you're given. So let me pick out 95. How did we get this 95? The rule is simply, one minus alpha over two. The answer you get, you read it from inside the table. So let's try at 95%. What is our alpha at 95%? Zero point zero five. So one minus zero point zero five divided by two. How do we get? Zero point nine seven five. So we're going to look for this one inside the table. You can get the exact figure of the closest possible. So when you go to zero point nine seven five, find it uh, here. Zero point. 975. What is the reading for this figure here? 1.96. So that is where the is coming from. Let's try if we had 
What is our alpha at 99%? 0 0.01. 0 0.01. So what's the procedure for reading it in the table? One minus alpha over two. Mm -hmm. All right. So what do we get? One minus 0 0.01 divided by two. What do we get? Zero is it? So let's look for nine nine five zero in the table here. So the closest to nine nine five zero is this one, right? Nine nine five one. What's the reading for 9951 here? 2 point what? 2.58. So this is where the 2.58 is coming from. 2.58, 1.96. And the song goes. Are you able to pick that for 99? Wasn't it supposed to, it was 1 minus 0 0.01 divided by 2 or 0 did you have? 1 minus 0 0.01 divided by 2. Divided by 2. Mm -hmm. So the answer I was getting was this one. Because you, you, you didn't use board mass, you first divide 0 0.01 divided by 2, then you subtract from 1. So zero point uh, zero point zero one divided by two will give you zero point zero zero nine, and when you remove that from one, it gives you zero point nine nine five. Yes. Thank you. Okay, now let's sing our song again. Just tell me the Z value. This song you appreciate it later because it gives you keeps your mind what running. So nine percent, five percent, zero point one zero, zero point zero one, zero point zero two, ninety, uh, ninety eight percent. Uh, two percent, uh, ten percent, and five percent. So just give me the Z values. I've given you significance levels, uh, confidence levels, and alpha values. So let's start with this column here. What is our, our Z for nine percent? Two point five eight. Five eight, correct. Two percent. Present two point three three. Good. Two percent is the same as ninety eight percent, which is two point three three. I hope that's coming from your head. Ninety five percent. One point nine six. One point nine six. One point nine six. Ten percent. One point six four five. 1.645, correct. 5%. 1.96. 6 correct. 0 0.10. 1.10. 1 1.645. 0 0.02. 2.33. 2 Zero point zero one. Two point five eight. Five eight. Same as ninety nine percent. Ninety eight percent. Ninety eight percent. Two point three three. Two point three three. Correct. All right. So now let's find the missing. 
something else here. So to find the missing figures, you should remember the formulas we had. Okay. So all these are looking for N. And N stands for what? N stands for what? Sample. Um, sample size. For now, but A is asking for sample size. Which formula do we use? So sample size only has two formulas. Either it's a sample, Z squared, S squared over E. Or it's a proportion, formula two, and is Z squared, PQ over E squared. E stands for the error. It comes in the form of within. If P is 20%, Q is a remainder, 80%. All right, let's look at uh, question one, two, and three. So question one, which formula do we use? Formula one, right? Yeah. So N is what? Z squared, S squared over A squared. What is our Z? Question one. One point nine six squared. It's coming from this our uh, song. Our S. What is our S? Our division is what? Two squared over the error. Four squared. So what do we get? As a final answer, where are you calculating from? I can't see anything. Hmm. Are you calculating? Can you see? Is it 15.3764? Pardon? 0 0.96. The final answer is what? So the answer is equal to. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's up to you and the calculator. So part two, N is what? Formula two, Z squared, PQ over error. We're using formula two because we're using a proportion there. All right. So, what is our Z? Two point five eight. Two point five eight. And what is our P? Zero point two. Two. And what is our Q? Eight. Eight. Because if this is 20%, the remainder is 80%. Then our error is in percentage, 2%. So we're going to put this up in what? Zero squared. Don't forget to square it. All right. How about number three? What formula do we use? N is equal to Z squared, S squared over E squared. What is our Z? 2.33. What is our S? 16. And what is our E? 
five squared. Why are we not squaring the 16? Because it's a variance. Because it's a variance, and variance is already squared, right? Where is the 2.33 coming from? From the Z. The 2%, all right? From the Z value of 2%. All right. Sometimes you'll be asked to find the missing A. Okay, the interval. So A, if you give an N is 36. Standard deviation. Four, the mean is 10. And the alpha is 0 0.05. Then to, to find confidence interval, n is 50, All right? And p is 10%, and significance level is 1%. And finally, c, I given a capital N is 50, a small n is 30, and your alpha is 0 0.02. So how do we find the confidence interval? We only have two formulas for confidence interval. Like I said, it's either a proportion or a sample. For a sample, it simply mean plus minus Z, then a deviation of a square root of N. If you're dealing with a proportion, confidence interval, is simply equal to the proportion plus minus Z and P over Q over capital N. Sometimes we're not given P, so P is simply what? A small N over big N. All right. So question number A, we're going to use formula one. Confidence interval, what is our mean? Our mean is 10 plus minus Z. Z is what? What is our Z here? Somebody help me. 1.96. 1.96. And the standard deviation is what? Fourth. Fourth. Square root of what? N, which is 36. So 36, we only use Z when our sample size is more than 30. So here we have 10 plus or minus 1.96. And our sampling error there is two. For square root of 36 is six. Six into 12 is two. So here we're going to have what? 10 plus minus 3.92. So you first start with the lower bound by subtracting. 10 minus 3.92, we get what? 10 minus 3.92, we get 6.08. And when we add the upper bound, we're going to get 13.92. So we are 95% confident that the true mean will lie between 6.08 and 13.92. We are 90 what? 5% confident that the true mean will lie between 6.08 and 13.92. Sorry, Mr. Collins, uh, how did you get the two? Not two in the brackets. 12 over root 6. Root 6, root 16 is 6. So 6 into 12, that is a 2. So this is coming from this calculation. Oh, OK. All right. Then part B, we're going to use what? Formula number two for the proportions. So our P is 10%, so 0 0.10. Our Z at 1% is what? 2.58. Then we are going to have what? Square root of PQ. Our P, 10%, meaning what is our Q? 
90%. And our N, which we have is 50. All right. So when you multiply 90 times 10 over 50 and square root it, we're going to have 0 0.04. 0 0.04 or 0 0.05. 0 0.05, you multiply it by the Z figure here, 2.58. It's 0 0.129. So 0 0.10 plus minus 0 0.129. If you want, you can put them in percentages since these are proportions. Plus minus what? 12.9%. So the lower bound will be um, 12.9 from 10. Negative 2.9%. To 22.9 percent. So here we are 99 percent confident that the true proportion will lie between negative 2.9 percent and 22.9 percent. But if you don't know how to comment, just leave it like that. You get the full max for this confidence in that. Now, part C has given us an amazing arrangement. There's no proportion there. It's just n is equal to what? 50, n is equal to 30, and the uh, significance level of 2%. So I said sometimes you're not given proportion directly. Proportion is simply what? Small n over capital N. So 30 over 50 will give us a what? A 60%. Or 0 0.6. So this means that our Q will be what? By default, 1 minus P. So the difference between P and Q gives us our Q. So our Q is 0 0.4. Are we together? So meaning, using formula 2, our proportion will be Z. Some formulas will put alpha over 2 but people end up dividing this. So I usually leave it out in my calculations, the alpha over two, because it's the same Z song that I've been teaching you. So on our proportion, we're going to put 0 0.6. On our Z, we're going to put 2.33. And our P is 0 0.6, and our Q is 0 0.4. Capital N of these two, you pick the bigger, pop. Population which is 50. So if you compute that, you're going to get 0 0.2. So when you subtract, this is 0 0.4 to 0 0.8. So we are 98% confident that our true proportion will lie between 40% and 80%. All right. So that is how we finish sampling. Now, how do exam questions come? And how do I handle a question like that? Any questions before I go? I only have uh, two minutes. Are we by any means going to look at the some of the examples for the, how the exam comes? Yes, especially because he repeats the questions from the tutorial sheets. So uh, we'll look at this again in the evening. I know some of some of you have Peter Fee, Fion Sefe, Taraf Peter Mobati, um, an African mind understands twice. So first, so at least in an Anglaf Peter Ko, at least the level of understanding I'll have when I'll be you have when I'll be teaching this again will be different. 
Right. Is it just me or the screen has gone blank? Uh, it's gone blank. Is it dark? Yeah, it's only black. Even now? Yes. It's black. You can only see the case. You can only see the case. Uh -oh. so it seems my, how about now? It had come on, but again, it's not. I think the connectivity is quite uh, not good. Okay, even now you can't see anything? No. It's I think I can see something. It's on now. Okay. So let's look at um just one question before I go from our, um, our question bank, our Bible. Um, any questions whilst I'm, I'm looking for a question? I'll share the tutorial sheets that you could um, check on. So this is where school begins, because these are questions that will require you to now think and apply everything that we've been learning. So a question will come like this. A sample of 35 teenagers. So I wish you could do test twos because test one is very limited. I refer, I refer to a random sample of 35 teenagers who average 33.7 hours of sleep. Assume the population a standard deviation of um, 7 point of, of 1.8, find a 95% confidence interval. So what have we been given? From the question, what do we have? We have the N, the number, or is it the sample of 35? N is 35, uh-huh. We have the standard deviation of 1.8. Standard deviation of 1.8, uh-huh. And uh, so 3.7 is what, the mean? Mean is 7.3, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. The Z value. And the Z of 95%. So what's the Z from 95? 1.96. So how do you find a 95% confidence interval? What format we use? Mean uh, plus, plus Z, standard deviation over square root of N. All right. So 7.3, 1.96. Then, 1.8 over square root of what? At five. You get it, eh? Are we there? Mean plus minus. Yes. Okay. Anyone lost on what has uh, been done there? Okay, we don't need to calculate that. We just need to get the principle from there. Okay. Yeah. So let's also look at um, another question from the previous uh, exam. Uh, 
those of you who did um, the deferred test discovered all those questions came from the already compounded my uh, question bank. So perhaps let's look at the 2022 paper. November. Okay. okay, so let me this is a 2022 QM, 2021. Let's see on normal distribution. Let's see on um, confidence interval. Is there anything? Okay, here, but E, four marks. A sample of 500 Zambians contains 96 people who seek language other than English. Construct a 90% confidence interval to estimate the proportion of people who speak English, who speak the language other than English at home. So what have we been given here? The sample, sample size. Mm -hmm. Big N, which is what? 500. Mm -hmm. Small n. Ninety-six, right? Ninety-six, and then the z value, one point six four. Small n over big n. All right. So z value will be what? One point six four five. One point six four five or one point six five. All right. So what formula are we going to use here? Um, so n is what? 500. And small n is what? 96. So I mean they want us to calculate the proportion. Which is small n over big N. So 96 over what? 500. Which is what? So we're going to use a formula for proportions, which is equal to P plus minus Z PQ over what? N. This is better than memorizing probabilities and condition probabilities. It's very straightforward. So whenever we're given two populations, they're being asked to compute what? Our um, our P. So 96 with 0 0.192. Then meaning our Q would be what? 0 0.808. And our Z at 90%, what is our Z? 1.65. So here we have what? 0 0.192 plus minus 1.65 over 0 0.808 times 0 0.192 over the capital N, which is 500. From there, you can take it up. Okay. Are we moving together? Yes, yes. Anyone behind? Please ask. I want a quick, I want a quick explanation on the P. Uh -huh. So when you give us a scenario like this, P is what? P stands for what? Population or proportion? The proportion. Oh, okay, proportion. 
So the, the formula for proportion is n over, small n over big N. Yes, if you're not given a P. If you're given P directly, you go as it is. Okay. So tomorrow he will look at this. This is the sample, your thing that he is going to consider. There's a black thing that has come on your screen. All right. Are you able to see now? Yes. Okay, so I suppose let's look at question number two. Okay, this will be your homework. So we've been given this question here. What can we get from there? Suppose the average annual consumption of milk in Zambia is 23.4 per person. Standard deviation is 7.1 per person. If 40 people are selected, what is the probability that the average milk consumption will be less than 25 annually? Okay. So. <clears throat> We'll look at more of these questions in the evening, but I hope you get the concept of what I'm trying to bring across. So you need to understand the song and the formulas that are related to the song. Thank you so much. This for makes more time. sense. And this makes more sense. Thank you. And here. Have a good day. <laughs>